good morning good morning one and all <coughs> uh, welcome to this course uh, tribology uh, the subject is uh, an elective subject uh, in uh, eighth uh, seventh semester uh, this video is under uh, 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 learning management uh, system under the uh, department of collegiate and technical education government of karnataka uh, myself uh, g arish uh, faculty in mechanical engineer working in huvinadagli uh, balari district uh, this uh, subject tribology is a uh, subject uh, in a design uh, stream the in mechanical engineering the our course outcomes are and to, uh, to understand the fundamentals of tribology and associated parameters apply the concepts of tribology for the performance analysis and design of components experiencing the relative motion analyze the requirements of uh, <coughs> design and design hydrodynamic general bearing as well as the uh, hydrostatic bearings and different types of bearings uh, which are uh, working in mechanical uh, engineering especially in uh, machine aspects and select the proper type of um, bearing materials and as well as uh, select the proper lubrications in uh, with for given uh, tribological application and apply the principles of surface engineering for different application of tribology these are all the outcomes of this course after having this glimpse of tribology uh, knowledge okay the course contents in this uh, tribology are the introduction to the hydrostatic bearing and uh, hydrostatic step bearing and load carrying capacity and high flow through the hydrostatic step bearing and the numerical examples of hydrostatic bearing in order to find out the load carrying capacity for different types of uh, uh, data <coughs> coming to this uh, tribology okay why we have to read this tribology what do you mean by this tribology okay the failure will takes place from many aspects uh, why the failure comes into the picture especially in machines okay when we design any particular machine what do we mean by design first design is uh, we have to plan we have to uh, find out a, any uh, uh, thing in order to fulfill the human need that is called as a design we have finally we have to arrive at a particular uh, this one in order to fulfill for the human need okay that is called as a design in coming to the design the failure is one of the important aspect come to the machine design we have to design a, any machine any parts according to our human need to fulfill the human need we have to design a, any machines see under that circumstances we have to <coughs> what we have to do in uh, teaching uh, sorry this one uh, in design the whatever the machines we design it should not fail should not fail then how the machine is going to fail the machine may be fail under different types of loading and uh, under different types of uh, failure analysis it may fail in any aspects but it also fails with the help of uh wear corrosion and environmental factors at that time the word tribology is coined that is the word tribology means tribos it's a greek word it is a, a derived the tribo means it's a rubbing and the lozi l o z y is lozi is a knowledge or a <coughs> uh, knowledge <coughs> rubbing surfaces wherever you have the rubbing surfaces the tribology is plays a very very important role you should know that uh, these uh, what uh, the rubbing surfaces wherever you see wherever you have this rubbing surface you take uh, any machines any uh, automobiles any uh, uh, any field okay the rubbing surfaces plays a very very important role when the two parts rub with each other due to friction there may be a lot of heat is going to generate due to this heat 
the friction is going to take space due to the friction the wear may take space due to the wear the material gets fails or machine get fails hence one should have that knowledge of tribology in order to overcome the failure due to this rubbing surfaces hence the tribology is a science that deal with the friction lubrication and wear in all contacting pairs and tribological knowledge helps to improve the service life and always uh, safety and reliability of interacting machine components and yields uh, substantial economic benefits the basic knowledge gained by the tribology course is uh, very useful for industries related to the power steel cement oil etc practicing such knowledge in problems ranging from household appliances to large size health ships earns the great economic benefits therefore tribology course is often named as an industrial tribology as well as applied tribology because this subject will give you the complete knowledge of how to avoid the friction how to overcome the failure due to the friction as well as the wear due to the uh, uh, <coughs> un scientific lubrication this tribology is a very very important uh, knowledge nowadays in order to overcome the failure okay in this uh, module 4 i am focusing on the hydrostatic bearing <coughs> see in this uh, what are the examples requiring the tribological knowledge let us consider few failed machine components failure of which could have been avoided using the tribological knowledge first one you are saying in the figure that is a carbon graphite seal the carbon graphite seal is employed to avoid the leakage of steam from rotate joints of paper industry failure of this component occurs due to the adhesive wear adhesive wear causes uneven surfaces that leads to reduction in mechanical contact area for some imposed load reduction or in mechanical contacts increases the level of stresses and hence chances of failure hence we have to have the proper knowledge of tribology in order to overcome this uh, failure of seals and coming to the cams the cams are very very uh, useful and uh, important uh, uh, elements in mechanical field the cams are used to transmit the rotary motion in reciprocating motion the these components are subjected to jerks in sliding distance which leads to form some pits on the cam surfaces you can observe in the figure see the thing which is uh, marked by the red circle it is due to the friction is small uh, pit is formed on the cam surface creation of pits on the cam surface increases the noise pollution and reduces the performance uh, reduces the efficiency understanding the mechanism of pit formation helps to estimate the life of components and find the methods to reduce the such pitting failures coming to this general wearing what i am uh, focusing uh, the always the tribology is a very very important in coming to the bearing so because the bearing is nothing but to bear the load to support the load see here in figure 1.3 uh, a and b you can clearly see the outer surface uh, which is a uh, amount of material is figure number uh, 1.3a here you can see the left side is a photograph of centrally grooved engine general bearing it appears that bearing is worn out due to the foreign particles and right hand side is a photograph of an aluminum bearing subjected to a heavy load which causes the sharp surface to run over the bearing in inner surface you can easily able to see the on the running wear by indicating by the black circle you can observe from this figure b also in these examples of general bearing wear increases the clearance between the shaft and bearing and leads to a reduction in load support capacity of the bearing 
often such failures occur in absence of sufficient lubricant hydrodynamic film thickness due to the relatively low spin learning the tribology cultivates an understanding that low <coughs> understanding at low speeds and main purpose of oil is the lubrication and high viscosity of oil will be preferred to low viscosity oil while at high speeds the major purpose of oil is to act as a coolant as well as a viscosity of uh, lubricants are preferred to carry away the frictional heat of operation here the lubrication is a secondary consideration study of fluid film bearings rolling element bearings seals caves cams or brakes or some of the applications in which the tribology is most essentially required the basic knowledge gained by this course is very useful for industries related to the power steel cement oil etc practicing such knowledge in problems ranging from household appliances to large ships and the great economic benefits therefore this course is very useful and is named as an applied tribology as well as the industrial tribology in this uh, module as i already discussed uh, told this is introduction to the hydrostatic bearing what do we mean by the hydrostatic bearing hydrostatic we have two types of uh, three types of uh, lubrications one is the perfect film lubrication that is also called as hydrodynamic lubrication hydrodynamic film lubrication and second one is called as a boundary layer lubrication and the third one is called as an extended boundary layer lubrication the hydrodynamic in the hydrodynamic lubrication we can able to expect the full film lubrication because the two elements one is a stationary element and the other one is rotating element as it would bearing as well as the shaft both the bearing is stationary and the shaft is rotating so in between there is a lubrication there is a complete an oil film which is around aroundly wrapped around the circumference of the shaft the both parts are completely separated by a full oil film that can be able to get only in the hydrodynamic lubrication in hydro uh, boundary layer lubrication part of the oil film is absorbed by the two layers but in the bound extended boundary layer lubrication that is what i am saying the hydrostatic uh, bearing in hydrostatic lubrication we have to separate the two elements bearing as well as a journal because a heavy load is acting on the journal as well as a bearing hence we have to get the oil film to separate the two elements otherwise the wearing of both elements may take place hence the, there may be a two metals get uh, weld each other in order to get a film we have to externally pressurize from the other source in order to get the lubricant between the two surfaces that is why this bearing is called as externally pressurized bearing here in hydrostatic bearing an external source of pressurized fluid pours lubricant between the two surfaces thus enabling the non contracting operation what i just told see the two parts the stationary element is bearing and the rotating element is the shaft both are separated by externally means by external pump we have to supply the oil at the pressurized pressure then we can able to separate the two elements to get an oil film in hydrostatic bearing can support the large loads this is called as a heavy loaded bearing or it is also called as externally pressurized bearing hydrostatic bearings can support large loads without general rotation and provide the large that is accurate and controllable the stiffness as well as the damping in order to dissipate the energy coefficients hydrostatic bearings rely on externally fluid pressurization to generate the load support and hence a large centering stiffness even in the absence of general rotation in achieve the load capacity and the direct stiffness of hydrostatic bearing do not depend on fluid viscosity thus making them ideal rotor support elements in process fluid parts <coughs> if observe the figure number 
you can see the hydrostatic stiffness is of unique importance for centering of high precision milling machines, gyroscopes, large arena movable seating areas, telescope bearings, and even cryogenic fluid turbo pumps for rocket engines. Simply, I can say the floor mills, what we are seeing in a normal life, the floor mills are usable by this hydrostatic bearing because the load is acting on the bearing is heavy. Hence, the loads, uh, this type of bearing is called as a hydrostatic externally pressurized heavy loaded bearing. The name, note that the hydrostatic bearings require an externally pressurized supply system and some type of flow restrictor. Also, under dynamic motions, hydrostatic bearings may display a pneumatic hammer effect due to the fluid compressibility because while we are pumping the fluid, pumping from externally agency. We can observe this type of fluid compressibility in this bearing. You can see that is why it is called as a hydrostatic thrust and radial bearings for process of fluid rotary machine. You can observe the figures, two figures. It can easily clearly indicate through those oil, uh, uh, sorry, the holes. Uh, we can easily able to supply the oil between the holes to pressurize the bearing as a, in order to separate the bearing as well as the germ. I do, <coughs> these are the advantages and the disadvantages of hydrostatic bearings. The first one, advantages of hydrostatic bearing. It supports very large loads. The load which supports is a function of the pressure drop across the bearing and the area of the fluid pressure action. Similarly, the disadvantages as well as the second advantage is the load does not depend on film thickness or lubricant viscosity because the load is directly depending it is acting on the bearing hence it does not depend upon the thickness of the film which form across the uh, gap between the low uh, sorry journal and the bearing and the long life without wear of surface can possible in this bearings it provides the stiffness and damping coefficients of very large magnitude excellent for exact positioning and control and coming to the disadvantages it requires ancillary equipment i told you it is an we need external agency larger installation and maintenance costs are high in this uh, hydrostatic thrust bearing it needs uh, fluid filtration equipment it needs because when we are uh, pumping from the external agency, we need the fluid should be free from uh, flaws, loss of performance with the fluid contamination, high power consumption because of pumping losses, potential to induce the hydrodynamic instability in hybrid mode of operation, and, and finally, the potential to show pneumatic hammer instability. For highly compressible fluids, that is, loss of damping at low and high frequencies of operation due to compliances and time lag of trapped fluid volumes. Okay, this concludes the, the basic of hydrostatic bearing. And what do you mean by the hydrostatic bearing? What are the importance of hydrostatic bearing? And as well as the advantages and disadvantages of hydrostatic bearing. And what are types of hydrostatic? So, uh, what are types of bearing systems? Regimes of bearing systems, regimes of low, uh, lubrications. In the next session, we are going to see the load carrying capacity of hydrostatic bearing. Thank you.